Coming up next on CTV News, more changes are ahead for the NFL franchise. The Washington Commanders plan to shell out millions of dollars to improve its fan experience here at FedEx Field. I'm Katera Jones. I'll have all those details coming up on CTV News. Plus, several Metro Rail operators are not meeting the mark. And we have CIAA highlights. All those stories and more up next. Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. Well, the Washington Commanders are once again making headlines. The team is moving forward with making major improvements to its Landover Stadium. This comes with the Burgundy and Gold will also lose its longstanding stadium partnership deal. CTV News' Katera Jones is outside FedEx Field with more. The Washington Commanders announced that it will spend $75 million to improve the stadium and fan experience here at FedEx Field in Landover. The team says it plans to make entry into the stadium quicker, create new premium seating options, improve food and beverage options, and also better its sound system. As for the stadium itself, it will also make some upgrades, including to its elevators, escalators, and other infrastructure improvements. Improvements. CTV News spoke to fans who had mixed feelings on the commanders spending big bucks to improve the stadium. That what they need to do is they need to do some improvement on these roads when, because I live in this area and it's hard to get in the stadium. Mm. I mean, you know, for people that live actually in that area. Hey, any improvement is great. Any improvement. Really? I would like the seats to be bigger though. Okay. That's my only complaint about the stadium. Are you a big Commanders fan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now in other Commander news, the popular shipping company FedEx, which has its name on the stadium, says it's ending its naming rights agreement with the Commanders two years early. According to reports, that agreement was supposed to end in 2026. Now this stadium has been called FedEx Field since 1999. Katera Jones, CTV News. The decision of FedEx ending its naming rights agreement with the commanders could result in the team losing about $15 million in revenue. Well, the threat of a partial government shutdown looms once again if federal lawmakers don't agree on a spending deal by tomorrow. Lawmakers must reach a deal before March 1st, a key funding deadline. A bipartisan spending deal was supposed to be unveiled Sunday, but didn't happen. The partial shutdown could begin this Saturday, March 2nd, if Congress cannot reach a funding agreement. Meantime, a second deadline takes place a week later on March 8th when a short-term funding bill passed in January will end. And as the Maryland legislature deals with a revenue shortfall, one lawmaker proposes increasing their taxes on alcohol and cigarettes. Delegate Ben Barnes, who sits on the House Appropriations Committee, is sponsoring two bills. The first would increase the per-pack tax on cigarettes by 75 cents to $4.75. The other measure would increase the sales tax on alcohol by a penny to 10 cents on the dollar. Reports indicate that the proposal could bring about $90 million in revenue to the state. Maryland State Police are investigating an early morning armed robbery and assault in College Park. It happened about 2.30 after the victim, an adult female, was driving on Route 1 near Ikea Way and noticed a dark passenger vehicle following her. The vehicle then allegedly tried to run her off the road as she entered the 495 outer loop. As she pulled over, multiple people robbed and assaulted her at gunpoint before fleeing the scene. If you have any information on the incident, you can call the Maryland State Police College Park Barrack at 301-345-3101. A financial error by the county's public school system is leaving some employees in the lurch. Some IT secretarial nurses and security staff say the county made a mistake last year and sent an extra payment to those workers. Officials with Ask Me Local 2250 say the workers tried to send the extra money back but were told the payment was correct. Now the school system is deducting their pay. Workers say their gross pay is being deducted rather than their post-tax pay. The school district attributes the problem to a system error related to pension deductions. 
The Maryland Higher Education Commission extends its financial aid priority deadline to accommodate a delay in federal FAFSA applications. The new deadline is May 15th to submit a 2024 to 2025 free application for federal student aid. Also included in the extension is MHEC's One App for Undocumented Immigrants. Students who submit their applications by the priority deadline are included in the initial round of awards in June of 2024. A shooting in District Heights leaves one man injured. Police say that just after 4 p.m. on 4 p.m. yesterday, they responded to the 6900 block of Walker Mill Road for a report of a shooting. That's where they found an adult male suffering from a gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The investigation into what led up to the shooting and the search for suspects is ongoing. Anyone with information on the case is asked to call 1-866-411-TIPS. Lawmakers in Annapolis are looking at several bills aimed at helping incarcerated individuals. One is the REAP Act, which stands for Resources and Education for All Prisons. The measure which passed in the House will require the state to help qualified prisoners gain access to financial aid by way of federal Pell Grants. Another bill, the Prevention of Forced Infant Separation Act, would help incarcerated mothers connect with their children by establishing liberal visitation rights. And a third bill targets voting rights. House Bill 627 will require the Corrections Department to register eligible prisoners to vote when they are released from prison. The legislative session ends on April 8th. And the Navy has joined the investigation into a hate bias incident involving two U.S. Marines based in D.C. Lance Corporal Sergio Delgado and Hayden Pritchard were charged earlier this month in connection to a hate bias incident at the University of Maryland in April of 2023. Investigators say, with the university, say racial slurs targeting the black community were found in a residence hall. Delgado was charged with trespassing. Pritchard was charged with trespassing and property damage. The university says neither suspect is enrolled in the school. And you are watching CTV News coming up. A bill in Annapolis could lead to all Maryland students receiving free breakfast and lunch. We'll have more on that story after the break. Stay tuned. Happy retirement, Dad. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Dad, what are you going to do now? Some couples do back-to-back -back cruises. No way. That's too, too... Passive. <laughs> I bet you guys won't last five months in the house all alone. Well, we just miss being around kids. And we aren't done yet. Milton Hershey School house parents? What's that? <laughs> so you want teenagers again? That's a full house. Well, you kids turned out all right. Yeah, and this way we get to give that gift again a bit longer. Don't you want to save? How will you afford to move? Can we even visit you guys while you're in Hershey? Oh, you can come visit, and the school will pay for us to relocate. And we'll save even more money because we won't have to pay for housing, utilities, and meals. And the school provides everything we need to make a difference in those kids' lives. We won't be alone. There'll be people like us from all over the country helping care for these students. You're set on it, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> It's a new chapter for you, and the kids who deserve one, too. Discover what's next at Milton Hershey School. I am an athlete. I am an educator. I am an EMT. A neurologist. A veteran. A business owner. I'm a mom. We, we are, are survivors. survivors. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women and doesn't discriminate. It can affect any woman at any age or stage. Yet many women don't know it's our greatest health threat. Encourage three women you love to learn more about their risk factors and how they can take charge of their health today. Welcome back. Well, a bill before lawmakers in Annapolis would provide free breakfast and lunch for all students in Maryland, regardless of need. Currently, the state provides free breakfast to schools where 40 percent of students qualify for free or reduced price meals. Elementary schools are exempt from the requirement if fewer than 15 percent of their students are eligible for the program. The bill has more than 60 sponsors in the House. If passed, Maryland would join eight other states that provide universal free school meals. 
A review by the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission says Metro Rail is not in compliance with the train with this train operator certification requirements. In an order issued today, the commission says Metro Rail is designating train operators as certified despite documents indicating that they are not. Officials say the commission's review demonstrates that Metro Rail is not ensuring that its train operators have the skills the agency requires to respond to an emergency is one very, very important layer of safety uh, that we are finding a safety gap in. Um, it's not for all operators. Uh, if we have various samples ranging from about 15% of operators in one sample to uh, half of operators in another sample. Um, so there are operators out there who did properly complete all of these steps. But for those operators that did not, um, Metro can't validate that they know uh, how to do all of these steps in an emergency. Uh, and that's why to address the safety issue and make sure the system remains safe, uh, we are ordering them to uh, find all of those operators, uh, retest them on these certification activities, uh, whether it be the written tests or the actual practical operations of the train. The order requires the system to identify operators that have not been that have been improperly designated as certified. Metro has 90 days to develop a corrective plan. As we reported earlier this week, speed cameras across the county may go offline as the police department transitions to a new vendor. That means there could be a gap in enforcement that stretches for weeks or months. For years, the county speed cameras have been run by a company called Conduent. In 2023, when cameras were authorized for residential areas, officials determined that the vendor couldn't handle residential speed enforcement. The company also had problems operating cameras on Indian Head Highway. The department says its goal is to have new cameras in place within 90 days. A Prince George's police officer was released from jail and is on home confinement. Corporal David Hardister is accused of attempted murder for allegedly shooting his service weapon at his wife's boyfriend while his back was turned. Hardister told police that it was an accident. The officer has been with Prince George's police since 2005 and is currently suspended without pay. A Catholic group is asking Maryland's attorney general to end its investigation of child sex abuse into the Archdiocese of Washington in Delaware. According to the Baltimore Sun, the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights called the 500-page report on the Archdiocese of Baltimore, quote, a total waste of money. Since the Child Victims Act went into effect October 1st, a slew of lawsuits have been filed in Maryland alleging abuse at churches and state institutions, including juvenile detention facilities. Well, an update to a series we brought you two years ago about a local community trying to preserve its history and bring restorative justice to its residents. Lakeland, a historically black neighborhood in College Park, was torn apart for decades, all under the guise of urban renewal. So when a developer recently purchased Campus Village Shops, a small strip mall that once belonged to the community, residents were again disheartened. But after a year of discussions, Lakeland leaders were able to secure a space for a new legacy center. It'll also be home to the Lakeland Community Heritage Project. Uh, we have a digital archive that folks will be able to access there. And also there'll be some physical exhibits for people to see and come in and learn about the Lakeland story. And also a small space that will house the physical archives for the neighborhood. So much has been taken for us and it's a wonderful place to just keep our history uh, intact as whatever we can keep intact at this point. I'm really looking forward to having that, especially the audiovisual section of that. They have a special place for us to record history. And the new development in Lakeland Legacy Center are scheduled to be completed in three years. Well, after the break, CTV News is continuing to highlight black history in the county. Find out how one cornerstone of the black community continues to be a source of brotherhood. Stay tuned. When I found out my son was using marijuana, I thought it was just part of adolescence. Lots of teens and young people get high. But then I found out how powerful today's concentrates are. I couldn't believe it. It's far more powerful than weed from the 70s, 80s, and, and 90s. When teens use vapes or dabs, the potency can be 80 to 100% THC. THC can cause addiction, hallucinations, paranoia, anxiety, and cannabis-induced psychosis in youth. For teens and young adults, marijuana use comes with increased risks of suicidal thoughts, planning, and attempts. And these high THC products can be bought almost anywhere. From gas stations to dispensaries, 
I had no idea. Talk to your children well before they experiment with today's potent THC products. Get educated. Help them understand the dangers are real. Just Say No, K-N-O-W. Go to justsayno.org today for the facts. You gotta believe without fear. You gotta keep going, keep breathing. When you face a day, it feels like you're gonna break. You gotta believe without You gotta keep going, keep breathing. You face a day that feels like you're gonna break. So lean on the ones that love you. The guardian angels above you. And they go back. Thanks for staying with us. Well, the barber shop has been one of the cornerstones in the African-American community for decades as we continue to celebrate Black History Month. Photojournalist Anthony Jefferson takes us into the Black Barber Shop, a community hub that has been a space of trust and self-expression. Barbershop in the African American community is a staple because, I mean, people go through a lot of stress, a lot of hard times, and as well as happiness. Like, you get kids that come through here with good grades and they want to be patted on the back, so you have to give them, you got to cheer them up, as well as console when they're going through things. I boost up a lot of people's dreams around here. Just to see me come from where I came from, the learning how to cut hair, and actually being here every day cutting hair. But don't let the cover of your book define you. Just because of where you grew up at, or what you may look like, is not who you really are. So you go ahead, despite what you went through, and, and, and you fight for something better. Strive for something better. With today's standards, Barbers typically, they wear tennis shoes and boots, but back then, when I was getting my hair cut, the barbers wore Crocs, they wore oysters. They was top dressers, you know what I'm saying? They looked good in the community, so it was something that, that stood out about that, so that's what made me go into barbering. The barber shop in the black community gives out a lot of opportunities because it gives each and every one of these guys an opportunity to be their own boss, which they already are. And then it shows the kids in the community, whether you be seven up to just almost 21 years old, a chance to be a leader, uh, to grow your own business, just by watching these barbers here. And the barbershop has always been a safe meeting ground in the black community. The barbershop is a sanctuary because when we first opened up back in like maybe 92, 93, we had a, a lot of the older guys uh, come in, play checkers, chess, just to commute, drink their coffee. They didn't even um, get haircuts. They just wanted to come in and be a part of the barbershop every day, talk about politics, what's going on in the community. Black barbershops have long been and continue to be central hubs of the black community, a place to connect, share, and overall embrace a community. And we want to thank both the narrator and the photographer for that story. Well, a few Marylanders are a little bit richer after hitting the lottery last week to scratch off tickets worth a million dollars were cashed in. Five prizes of 100000 or more were bought in Baltimore, Elton, and Hyattsville. 29 people won at least $10,000 in prizes last week. Winners can cash their prizes at the Maryland Lottery Claim Center in Baltimore. 
And on the environmental front tonight, Prince George's has earned the right to a little trash talk. The county has won the Organics Diversion Program of the Year Award from the U.S. Composting Council, which is based in North Carolina. Prince George's has been expanding the curbside compost pickup program as part of its diversion initiative. The program has been expanded to over 172,000 homes. For more information on how to compost in the county, you can visit mypgcus compost. Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's our pet of the week, Meat Cookie. She's an eight-year-old white and tan domestic long-haired cat. Hi, everyone. I'm Cookie. How are you guys doing? Somebody please come and adopt me. I'm beautiful. I'm sweet. I'm loving. <laughs> she was great in the household. Very friendly, very quiet. Um, around maybe some older people. You know, maybe mid-older, not too old, but good company. So I'm trying to figure out if that was Cookie's voice or not, but if you'd like to adopt her or any of her furry friends, you can call 301-780-7200. And you're watching CTV News coming up after the break. Our sports reporter Simon Bugs has a preview of the Wednesday sports page. What's up, everybody? And coming up on your Wednesday sports page, a recap of some high school and college playoff games that were played last night. I promise you, you're going to want to see this. Stay right there. I received my master's and I started counseling in Deer Park, Pasadena, Texas, and um, was out playing basketball and had a real, real bad back injury. The physician gave me some painkillers and they worked beautifully. I mean, I was using those pills frequently. And at the same time, thinking that I was quote unquote functional, my wife um, uh, starts saying to me, look, Robert, the pills are destroying our family. Um, can I stop real quick? <laughs> At that point, my wife decided that she needed to get away because the kids were growing up seeing an addicted father. I cried out and, and asked God to somehow deliver me from the substance abuse. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't. I ended up living on the street in an abandoned warehouse for 12 years. There happened to be a hole that had somehow been cut out. I would lay on that nasty mattress and I would look through that hole and I would ask, God, is this it? Where are you? Where are you? The ARC had saved my life. What the work therapy gave was structure. I felt like I was a part of something again. And now today, I am the intake coordinator where I have that opportunity to give back to others what the ARC gave so freely to me. Nothing is more powerful than that. So I've been clean now for about 10 years. The kids are back. The wife, we're the best friends now. The ARC helped restore everything that I thought I had lost forever. Hey sports fans, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. The start of your Wednesday sports page. Beginning with some high school basketball news, the high school basketball playoffs are underway and the Largo and Crossland boys basketball teams took the court last night versus one another. CTV Sports was able to catch up with Lions head coach Rodney Ward before the game and he touched on what he wanted to see from his players in the matchup. Just, just energy, effort, uh, enthusiasm, uh, playing for each other, making the right plays, taking care of the ball, uh, making layups, making free throws, 
and just uh, come with that focus, this championship focus, championship effort. Starting with the first quarter, Crossland was able to strike first and get the first points of the game as number four Jaden Walls drove the ball baseline for a layup, avoiding multiple defenders in the process. And soon after, the Lions scored their first basket of the night thanks to this putback layup from forward Cam Ward. Over the course of the quarter, Largo began to pull away though because of plays like this and one layup for two guard Jalen Johnson after fighting for a loose ball, as well as this nice job of forward Cam Ward getting to his spot and knocking down this mid-range jumper. And the Lions ended the opening quarter being up 18 to four. Moving on to the second quarter, the Lions continued their shot making such as this three-pointer hit by forward Rooney Joseph. And even though Crossland made some plays in the quarter like this nice layup converted, by center and forward Eric Dukes, they couldn't close the gap and went into halftime down 43-13. to And Largo will hold on to their lead in the second half and route Crossland 68-23. to Their next opponent will be Fairmont Heights tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Meanwhile, over in Baltimore, the Bowie State men's basketball squad took the court yesterday as well against Livingstone in the first round of the CIAA tournament. Beginning with the first half, the game was close as the Bulldogs traded baskets with the Blue Bears and held a single-digit lead through most of the period. But as time went on, the Bulldogs began to pull away. And thanks to shots made like this floater from guard Kevon Corley, the Bulldogs making plays on defense to force a turnover resulting in another bucket and this made three from another guard in Anthony Carpenter, Bowie ended the first half being up 36-24. Switching to the second half, Livingstone began to mount a comeback as they cut the lead from 12 to single digits. And with 36 seconds left in the game, forward Omari Wimbush was fouled and Bowie only led 63-61. to And Wimbush nailed both free throws to increase Bowie's lead to 65-61. to Shortly after Wimbush's made free throws, Corley scored again to increase the lead to 67-61. to and Livingstone came back down the court and guard James Nipper made a layup to make it 67 to 63. And after another two made free throws from Bowie, that sealed the deal as the Bulldogs 69 to 66. CTV Sports caught up with Bulldogs head coach Daryl Brooks after the game and he believes his team's ability to win close games in the past helped them come out with the victory yesterday. We've been doing that to a certain extent the last couple of weeks, winning close games, going down early, coming back. We did that at, uh, at Lincoln last week. So uh, I, I thought when we went up 17, I, I thought that we were going to be able to kind of ride it out. I knew they would make a run. Uh, I didn't think that the, the kind of run they made that they would. I knew they were capable. So, you know, again, we missed some shots. Uh, we turned the ball over a couple of times. We missed some free throws. The biggest thing is that we were getting shots in that, in that stretch, and we weren't making shots. So, you know, we made some big ones down the stretch, and we made some big, uh, some big free throws. Bowie State will match up next versus Fayetteville State tonight at 640. And that is your Wednesday sports page. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. Thanks, Simon. And now let's get a quick check of our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, you might want to get indoors early. There is a wind advisory that starts at 6 p.m. and goes into early morning tomorrow with wind speeds reaching 31 miles per hour in some areas. Thursday, it will be sunny and clear with a high of 45 and a low of 29. Friday showers li likely in the afternoon. Temps warm up to a high of 54. Evening lows drop to 43 and keep those raincoats handy. There's a 50% chance of rain on Saturday. Temps will reach 57 to close out the week. And now for the community calendar. Tomorrow night, former United States Capitol Police Captain Harry Dunn will be at Hillcrest Community Center for a conversation with purpose. Justice accountability in the aftermath of the Capitol riots. Dunn will be discussing his memoir, the new New York Times bestseller, Standing My Ground. The event takes place again tomorrow from 6.30 to 8.30 at night. For more information, visit pgparksdirect.com or call 301-505-0896. And that wraps up our CTV News Update. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Byron Scott. Join us tomorrow night. Good night.